And today we are in for a treat. Thank you wherever you are in the world for hitting that like and subscribe button while you're watching our YouTube content. We really do appreciate it. If you've got any comments, leave them in the video below. We will always try our best to give you assistance where we can. So thank you to Midwich. If you don't know, we've been acquired by Midwich. Go check them out. They've also got their own YouTube on technical channels absolutely fantastic so make sure you go check out midwich this is only one of two hoodies i've got one and mr jake britain has got the other one surprise surprise so what are we going to take out a look today i think that box in the background there is slightly giving it away super excited been trying to get my hands on one of these for a long time hike vision kindly brought one down personally for me last week so we can get one up outside make this video and get you guys interested in this technology so what are we going to look at today the new tandem view ptz a lot of you have already been in touch about this the Tandem View PTZ is a new series of PTZ. Basically, two cameras in one, as you can see here. Camera, camera. It's two new products in the range. This one here, which we're gonna be focusing on today, and the other one is the white one with the, what almost looks like a built-in bullet camera in the top of it. Already done a video on that a few months back, so if you haven't seen it, go check out our YouTube channel and go and search for that product. Now, why use this product? Now, this gives a wealth of security functions and features to your application, your site, your customer. Why? It's two cameras in one. When one's not enough, use two. The reason these cameras are now coming out with two cameras is because you're able to maintain overall scene integrity using the wide angle camera and use the PTZ for the close up detail, patrol, presets, whatever that might be, you know, depending on the application. It's a very, very dynamic piece of equipment. I'm super excited to get it outside and fit it. So a couple of things that I want to point out. So I've already taken this camera out of the box and uh, that's why I can lift it because it is heavy it's around 12 kilograms so you do have to be careful when you're lifting this for those of you at home that's the part number you can pause the screen there so in the box I'm going to bring you a little closer to see this actually so let's da -da -da. try not to see the mess in the workshop okay so I've pre-hung a bracket on the side of our demo pod. The reason being this allows me to put the product on here without holding it. Um, it's a, too heavy to hold and make a video on. It's a nice way of rigging this up to show you guys how this looks. So standard wall bracket, although this will go on a swan neck. It even comes with an adapter. So if you've got an existing WAC or Ultron swan neck that's threaded, we give you a threaded adapter with the bayonet fit in here. So that product can basically fit on top of there. Don't throw that away. You guys always keep requesting them. Make sure you keep them handy. So, top hat comes with this top hat. It's a new platinum and black color scheme. So very, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, effectively fit this top hat to a wall bracket, swan neck, you know, uh, pendant mount particularly. Uh, you know, whatever it is the, that you're fitting this on, make sure you just fit it, you know, as per the bracketry. Make sure you tighten the nuts down. There's uh, two Allen keys on the top of there. Make sure you tighten them down. So, the camera itself, this new bracket design, we've seen this on some of the other cameras, mainly the Panaviews in the past. This camera function allows you to hang the camera on this top hat and allows it to swing freely. Why is that important? Well, it allows you to make off the connections inside the camera head. So you're able to make off any of the connections, your power, your network, your alarm inputs, outputs, your audio, RS-45, etc. Whatever that may be that you've wired to this top hat here, you're able to work on that safely. Uh, you're able to make off the connections before you close the lid up. Previously, you'd have had to hold the camera, try and make that off and then fit it afterwards. So a much improved bracket design. Very much welcomed indeed. It comes with a safety chain and a lifting handle. 
Once the camera is fitted securely inside this top hat, make sure the safety chain goes around whatever bracketry you have fitted, the swan neck, the wall bracket, etc., to give it additional security. Okay, so once you finish doing that, this simply, and I gotta try and make sure the cables don't jam. I knew this was gonna happen, because uh, I can't see on top of there. I'll get up on top of there now. Okay, so Callum can fast forward that bit uh, for you health and safety bods. So, this camera specifically, uh, it has a four megapixel, 42 times zoom PTZ with wiper and demiss function. So wiper, demiss function, infrared LEDs here, 42 times optical zoom, 16 times digital, and a four megapixel camera housing. The top, this is infrared, so the PDZ is infrared. The top housing, the top camera, is split into two camera modules, and that's color view, that's really important. So an eight megapixel color view camera. So we're combining color view technology with infrared technology, best of both worlds. If you know that album, holla. Uh, I'll try and give you a closer look at this. So you can see that, you can see one camera module, the other camera module will be there. Color view LEDs on the side. It's like uh, an angle. So you can see on the box, a bit of a strange shape to get used to. But if you look at the box, you can see there, they're actually offset against each other. So it does that, so it looks either way that way. But you can see, you get the general idea. So fixed lens, PTZ, infrared, color view technology, combining those two technologies to give you an absolutely beast of a camera. Um, two things to point out. One, this is a 36 volt DC model. Doesn't work off PUE alone, so you do need to have a cable to use the 36 volt PSU. The 36 volt PSU would normally be in the box, um, so just make sure you fit that 36 volt PSU and make sure it's within proximity of the camera to give it its camera power. Um, second thing on this is, again, they're quite heavy, so just make sure that when you're fitting this, you fit the top bracket, uh, fit the safety chains. There's four Allen keys on the top of this bracket. So once the camera locates in, as you saw me lift it up there and locate the Allen keys on top of there, the hex head screws, make sure all four are really tightened down to give you the maximum load bearing capability of that camera. It'll be fine. You guys do this day in, day out. Just make sure you fit that properly. So the next part of this for me is getting it outside. So. 36 volt DC, two cameras, eight megapixel color view in the fixed lens um, top mount, uh, the bullet camera effectively, and the panorama. Then we've got a 42 megapixel, four, 42 times zoom, optical zoom, with four megapixel PTZ function on the bottom. You can see it's powered off, so it's natural, um, is the droop. Uh, we're gonna take this outside. I'm super excited to get this fitted outside. We're gonna put it on our hopefully our high mast in the corner, if not, it'll go on the gantry, whichever we can uh, access the quickest. Get it outside, get it online. I'm gonna transfer you through to the web browser where I can then run through the functions and features of this camera. It is one of the smart range, so it does have a lot of smart VCA functions in it. Uh, one thing to point out currently, there is no smart tracking handover. The smart linkage doesn't exist between the static and the PTZ on like some of the other models will do like a handover so we'll detect on there smart track on the PTZ currently that doesn't do that and um, but it does have a ton of other functionalities which we will run through on the web browser super excited stay tuned when we go fit this outside and we'll see you in two ticks Okay, so we've now got this camera fitted outside on our big column. It did take a bit longer than normal. Why? Because we've also fitted the new IDS TCM AMPR camera. Got that up and running. So you will see that video next week. I'm super excited to bring you that one as well. Lots of cool content on its way. Right, so we're going to web browse into this tandem view PTZ. And we're going to walk through the setup of the PTZ, the events, etc., and, and point out some of the obvious things that you guys as installers or the end user may want to know. 
Then I'm going to take you outside and show you the interaction with the High Connect app and the two-way audio function that you can realize via the app. So first thing we're going to do is web browse into the product. So make sure I remember it. it's this one. Now we're going to open this in Internet Explorer mode. So we're using Edge Explorer, three dots there, reload in Internet Explorer mode. And we're open this page in Internet Explorer mode. Next time, done. Close that down. There's a new plugin. So yeah, proceed. Download said plugin. Go back to that. And open up. No, close. Right, we're going to log into the product. And you will see the two cameras. Like I said, the sort of 180 degree pan of view split over two cameras, 8 megapixel. And then you'll see the PTZ, 4 megapixel, 44 times optical zoom. So if I just press play, now it will be a little bit slower when you're using a web browser. There's a lot of decoding that needs to happen on this. I bit my lip as well, everyone which is a stupid thing to do. You can see here, uh, panoramic camera. So if I double click on this, 180 degree view. So all of the public road and our units here, and um, plus our car park and lovely sunny day here in, uh, in, in Wales, in the UK. Very unusual to have this sun this early on in the year. So we're very, very appreciative of it. And we capitalize on that by fitting all of these products outside today while the sun shines. So eight megapixel panorama. Overall scene um, observation, you know, that scene integrity. So you could always got a watchful eye on what is happening. And then we've got the PTZ. So if I double click on the PTZ, that's a four megapixel PTZ. And you can see I've got full PTZ control over that. And like any PTZ, if I Double click and get this up. Normal PTZ controls through the PTZ and the, and the web browser function is a bit slower when you're using a web browser, but on the app software, it's very, very responsive. All your presets, etc., patrols, patterns, all be, are all programmed via this interface here. So you set up all your presets, then you set up your patrol, which is the presets combined, or you can do a pattern and it records your on-screen movement. Doesn't matter how you do it, which one is preferable to use an application. They all work um, for different instances. I just park mine as preset one there and that's where it normally stays and it reacts to any smart event, which we'll go through shortly. You've got the wiper function. So they do come with a wiper, like I said. And there we go. And you've got infrared lights, um, all sorts of different functions. The 3D smart tracking, that's cool. The 3D positioning. So if I draw a box here and say, I wanna look at this gate, the PTZ will just go in and react directly to that area. In fact, you can just keep going with it. It is a 42 times optical zoom, and that's on its limit there, 42 times. That's got digital zoom as well. You go still going in, and there's the 42 times zoom. Look, that's our 42 times zoom limit. That was the limit on the 3D tracking that you saw before. There we go, so off there, back to home. Um, nice general surveillance. Now, if you're wondering what 42 times zoom looks like from a zoom perspective, if I go around here, let's try and look somewhere. There's that new AMPR camera. So the new IDS TCM 403 uh, BI model is this one here. Brand new interface, brand new algorithm and hardware. Keep an eye out for that video. That thing is crazy. So if we go up here, Bearing on mind, we are on a seven foot column here, seven foot, seven meter column. Uh, so it's about seven meters up this PDZ, so it does wobble a little bit. But again, if I zoom in to something quite far in the distance, let's go over here, over to the smokestacks. And there's the 42 times zoom look. It's actually really stable. you'd be able to follow someone at those ladders with no issues whatsoever. And again, there's some oh, people's flats. But yeah, 
That's it, and there's a water tower. So that those smokestacks are about six fifty, and um, distance wise, about six hundred and fifty meters away um, from you know line of sight from where we are. Maybe a little bit longer. Maybe a little a lot, lot longer. Actually, probably a lot further than that. Um, but yeah, they are quite far away. But again, you can see the sort of performance. Like the road junction there, the road junction there is about 300 meters away. So if we look at the road junction here, I mean, we could have a PTZ preset that was here, capturing that road junction. I could say that. And you can see how quickly it goes between the presets. If you're on a tour, you can set all of this configuration up. must have not saved that properly when I did it last time. Apologies. Let's just do that again. Yeah, about by there. Save that. Yeah, now it's saved. We'll do that one there. All the way down there. Yeah, that's better. Didn't save it properly before. So there we go. Um, presets, patrols, wiper, all can be controlled through that front end. Playback picture. Open platform, wait for it to load. That's a good old bike mark, that one. The open platform is where we set up our smart event so we can have face or human detection or smart event. It really depends on your site and the application you're looking for. We'll focus on smart event today. Um, generally, we're going to use line crossing, intrusion, etc., which is covered under smart event. But you can use specifically face and human detection. We'll come back to this sub menu. Configuration. Wait for it to load. So, under local, I normally turn all these on within the web browser. You can see all the detections. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, do that. Under system, model number. Current firmware version. I have looked. Brand new product. We haven't even got this, you know, into DVS to sell. I'm super excited to get a video out there um, to get you guys aware of this new product. So, no, currently no new firmware. But again, very general as a web browser. Very, very familiar with how this looks. Time settings, etc. Image stitching. So, with the image stitching, best stitching distance, 20 meters. It's probably about... I'd say right for the application we're in, but you can choose to change that depending on the, your installation method. Maintenance, so reboot, default, upgrade firmware. And you've got select diagnostic information. They always add in stuff on here. So software status, hardware working status, and starting log. So you can select all them and export the diagnostic material, especially if you're doing debug for HQ. System service. Enable supplement mic, which is the IR. You can actually turn it off if you don't. And the EMMC, EMMC protection. Live view connections, 10. And then uh, security audit log. Security. I'll try and skip through some of these. User management. They're all familiar. Network. Standard network functionality. In fact, what I will do is change that to that. Good old Google. Uh, then we've got... Advanced settings, so SNMP, FTP, if you're going to use that. Email, if you're going to use email. Platform access, I've already enabled Height Connect and I've added it to my phone in preparation. And I'll show you that function when we finish the video when I head outside. It also supports ISUP. ISUP is our back-end connection into Height Central. So the product can directly support or be added to Height Central via the ISUP protocol. You enable that. Fill in these details and it will add directly as a device into Hike Central. HTTPS, QoS quality of service, integration protocol if you're using it with third party, network services, alarm server, TCP acceleration, traffic shaping, and SRTP. Very common interfaces now on all our latest hardware. Uh, products and firmware, or latest firmware, you get a lot of this covered. So tons of cybersecurity stuff built into it, loads of configuration options. You just need to know what you need to set based on your installation or your IT customer's needs effectively. Video and audio. So PTZ, um, mainstream, you've got four megapixel, as I said, for the PTZ, HU65, 
25 frames a second, that's fine. Um, panoramic, you've got normal substream, video stream, so video and audio if you want, if you're going to connect audio into this. 8 megapixels, like I said, 25 frames a second, H265 plus again. Save that. Audio. So you've got line in only, the input volume, output volume. So we'll make the output volume the highest. So when you're speaking through the speaker, through High Connect or our software, or if the event is going off, it's the loudest possible output of the volume. That's exactly what you need. And then input is for the microphone, region of interest, and display info on stream. Image, now. Okay, so both channel numbers can be set independently. So if you have... Um, the if you have the need to adjust each independently, you can. Uh, you can see two cameras there. You can see very faintly that stitch line there actually performs a lot better um, when you looked at it for the for the web interface initially for, than that. But both can be set independently, so they can both be set low illumination, perhaps exposure settings, day night, uh, backlight settings, white balance, image enhancement, etc. So both have the ability to do that. I'll go back to the PTZ. Again, same options. Image enhancement, exposure, focus, day, night, backlight settings, white balance, image enhancement, video adjustment. So both have a similar um, ability for that. Panoramic. What I probably would do on this is Change that up to seven. Snart light is, yeah, I'll leave it as auto for now. I mean, this is where you change the white light mode. So I could have it scheduled, normally on or normally off, and then the brightness level. So I could set start time six o'clock and go off at seven o'clock each morning. That's probably more like it. I'll just leave it like that scheduled. So the white light will come on six in the evening and go off at seven. I may even make it 1700 for fun. Okay, so nice and simple. That's it. OSD settings. I will display the camera name. Uh, delete that. Don't care about that. Save. Sorry, this is just anal. Completely understand. Easy for me to identify it on our system this way. And done. So it's as simple as that. You call it what you want, do what you want with that, guys. Okay. Image stitch parameters. Or oh, sorry, I lie. Image parameters switch. Confusing myself now. It's been a long day. What you can do is link it to a preset or schedule switch. Um, but on a panoramic panoramic and PTZ. So on a schedule switch, I can actually change the scene depending on time, that can be helpful in certain installation applications. Not used that widely, wide, widely, but I have used it on some occasions where in the morning the sun comes quite low, really bright on the camera, and we have to change the link scene um, because it does actually then affect the image, if that makes sense. And then, you know, later on, say 11 o'clock, the sun's moved away and the image needs to go back to its default outdoor uh, preset. That's what it's used for, mainly. PTZ menu. Try and get through this pretty quickly now. Basic settings, you've got preset speed. You know, the maximum tilt, al al maximum tilt angle, which is, is maximum allowed uh, angle. Zoom in speed, etc. So you can adjust all of them. Limits. Initial position. So when the camera boots up after reboot, where do you want it to go? Park action, no park action set currently, but I'm going to set a park action. So after 60 seconds, I want it to go to preset one. So it's always looking in that preset position. But again, there are all the different actions you can use for the park preset and the time. Privacy mask, again, if you're looking in an area or an area, say a housing area where you need to mask out houses for privacy, 
that's where you draw your areas, you enable them to draw them there. As the camera moves around, it will remember where those privacy masks are and then apply them to the image. Schedule tasks. If you enable a schedule task, you can have these different options here. So you can have a patrol between that time and then uh, a preset between that time and that time. And then maybe back to a patrol that time to that time. And you can click, if you click on it, it'll ask you what patrol. So I can have patrol one there and patrol two at that time, for instance. So very configurable on the schedule task, especially where you've got a wide area to cover, different needs for different times of the day or even the week. And that allows you to build up this really cool profile of what this PTZ does to maximize the return on investment for one single product. Absolutely fantastic schedule tasks. Not many people use it, but it should be used more widely. Wiper, yeah, one time mode. It's only one time mode available. Clear config, prioritize PCZ, position settings. Position settings, you can use like the GPS and compass modes, etc. Upload vandal proof alarm. So I can have vandal proof alarm. So if you shake it or you throw bricks at it, it'll shake. It'll warn you if you throw something at it. Um, and it'll also upload it to the alarm center. So we'll leave that on. And then you can set all the long latitude, latitude um, and gyroscope calibration, etc. Panorama tracking. This is where you set up the the actual, um, you can't actually, if I unlock it now, it doesn't actually allow me to move anything on you. It doesn't allow me to zoom in or zoom out anything. So it doesn't actually, yeah, it doesn't do anything. If I restore the scene, I've actually raised the case with Hike HQ on this to see what this actually allows us to do. I believe we should be able to zoom that in and drop it down a bit. But as it stands, I can't. Um, okay. Calibration. Now, for the panorama tracking, if you want to do the panorama tracking, we need to calibrate it. Two modes, auto, fast or manual. Always start with the auto one in my preference. Start calibration. It'll just go through this process. It does take a little bit of time. Okay, with the calibration, there's two ways of doing this, auto fast or manual. We'll try the auto fast, and that's the, it auto calibrates it for you effectively. You've got two scenes because you've got two cameras on that panorama model. So you've got the left hand one, the right hand one. So I want to start calibration of scene one, which is the left hand one. As you're looking at this, a left, this left hand one. So start calibration. Um, I refresh it here. Single scene calibration, go. And now it whizzes through all of these different waypoints and the progress will go upwards. But it can take a little bit of time. So I'll just come back to it once it's finished. Okay, has finished calibrating now. Give it a few minutes. Sometimes it does take its time. You may have to do this several times. It doesn't always work on the first go. If it doesn't work after several attempts of automatic um calibration you will have to go to manual and follow the on-screen instructions or give us a shout and we can help guide you through it there is a document as well again if you go to help it does tell you a lot of the functionality in here so if you go down to rapid focus it doesn't give you the actually the only one it doesn't give you is the panorama tracking but the rest of them it does give you most people forget there's actually a uh, menu built into this product uh, or help menu uh, again so both calibrated and done and then rapid focus i don't need it um, specifically on this application but it's a way of setting scenes up uh, so they're in focus so as the ptz is moving the it will focus on a predetermined scene so by the time it travels to the scene you're not wasting time focusing it you know when you arrive at the scene to focus on an object it's already in focus because it's using a predictive focus algorithm effectively um based on your calibration really simple to do so for instance if that's a scene here i can add a scene zoom it in on there and if that's a particular scene that i know i need to go to to monitor 
I was in focus now, but I could add that in there and simply you know, many multiples you can do. So if I just wanted to do that one, go start calibration, it'll go through this um, calibration process. You can see calibrating. Great picture. Again, does take a little bit of time. Calibration completed. And then you can adjust that red focus line there. So I could say, you know, just that's the bin height. Enable it. Click save. And that will be in focus as a scene then. So that scene will always be in focus. Um, again, up to you if you use it or not. I don't generally find you need it, to be honest. Um, they're so quick at focusing. Um, but again, if it is traveling around quite a lot and you've got really important stuff you're trying to monitor within the scene, it may be worth using the rapid focus function. Okay, moving on to events. Basic event, video tampering, alarm input, very standard functionality. Seven alarm inputs, um, linkage methods, etc. So you can have like PIRs, like Optex PIRs or dip, you know, external detection linked to the alarm inputs and they can flash or trigger the audible alarm, which is really handy. So a local detector connected to the device can also make the flashing light, uh, the you know, the live guard active deterrent function work. Two alarm outputs, exceptions, flashing alarm, flashing light output. So 15 seconds, high intensity for the brightness, and different de depends on what if you want it to flash or just be static and how many seconds audible alarm output again warning prompt or custom audio you can upload your own custom audio file and again preset ones here how many times it plays and you can click test and it will announce that out of the ptz plus the arming schedule say so really straightforward smart event again audio exception detection that's more if you're using uh, microphone connected into it. Most of our products with uh, audio input now have the audio exception detection. And then storage if you're using an SD card, which we're not in this case. Open platform, this is where you set up your VCA function, like I said earlier, and we will do that. So under smart event, you've got intrusion, line crossing, region entrance, region exit, and advanced. So like any of our products, you've got for intrusion, for line cross, etc. And this is the PTZ. Let's put it back to its home position. So I'm going to enable intrusion detection, box one. We're going to draw a detection area. So we're going to go from there. Say there. So that's about right. Uh, save. We're going to detect humans and vehicles. Save. Fresh all. Now, they, I want them to be in there for, say, three seconds or more. And 50% sensitivity is fine. Minimum and maximum object size. Again, maximum size. Save all that. Minimum size. We want to avoid small animals, etc. So we'll just save that. Click save. That helps really filter out a lot of the false alarms. I'm in schedule, linkage method. Now, linkage method, flashing alarm, audible warning, and I want it to smart track and click save. So this is where you set those linkage actions up. We'll abandon the car in the middle of the road, fantastic. So effectively now, that's my detection area. It's armed. I'm detecting human or vehicles. I'll transfer you through to the app so you can see this working in a minute. Um, and that's it effectively. And then line crossing, region entrance, region exit, and then advanced. You can set or tweak the parameters. You can put it into tune in mode and you can actually tweak a lot of these parameters here. Look, tracking duration is up to 300 seconds. I can make it lower. Uh, wait for uh, 
tracking ratio by tilt angle by target frame really straightforward you can see the algorithms attacked in there don't need to put it into tuning mode should work fine other than that guys i think that's about it so i'm gonna go out there now with the phone so that's basically the ptz so go back to live view so you get that overall scene integrity plus the ptz for your tours the great thing about this product is if you are using a ptz to follow people uh, do the smart tracking react to events um patrols tours etc you don't lose the scene integrity by having so like you can see the ptz is going to follow these objects here but you maintain the scene integrity with this overview camera which is super super important plus active lifeguard detection um to help deter any unwanted activity plus the two-way audio through our software or through our app and full control color view and infrared technology it's an all-in-one product this is super super exciting so i'm going to go out there and just show you how this works get it to track me around a little bit and hopefully uh yeah you'll really enjoy it so stay tuned Okay, thanks to Roy Cooper who's in there for destroying the video. So this is like take number 57. Still waiting for him to come out, but okay. So the PTZ is fitted up here on the mast. Like you can see it behind me up there. If I give you a closer look. You can see that under the AMPR camera or next to it. Um, if I walk in front of it now, you will find or you should hear it on this camera it'll start flashing and shouting at me um, because the detection will go so like I said it's got that intrusion detection Attention, please. there you go the aerial is under surveillance. quite loud and then what happens then is you can see the if I move that that way you can see on my phone it's actually going to track me as i walk around that'll start tracking me there you go So you get the idea effectively that's an auto tracking ptz using smart event the other great thing you can do with this like i said using the phone app so i've got my phone app here i can speak to so if i use the speak button so you can go hello roy cooper stop disturbing me there we go so thanks roy so yeah little shout out to roy there that's the video hope you enjoyed it Stay tuned next week for another how-to video. Appreciate any comments below. Um, the firmware will improve. I've already had some feedback off HQ just today for my feedback. They're looking at some mechanisms to improve already, which is fantastic. So I'll give you an update on that as soon as I get it. Stay safe.